Praise God, praise God. Karibuni sana to our streams of hope. I want to believe that you're doing very well. Again, I want to appreciate all of you that keep on following me. Asante ni sana for you guys who have already subscribed to my YouTube channel. I want to welcome you. If you have not, you need to click that subscribe button. That is the best way you can minister to me even as I minister uh, to you. I've been talking about something to do with the wilderness and today I want to continue with what I'm calling the God of the wilderness. Is there a God in the wilderness? That's what we want to find out today. The Bible says in Exodus chapter number 17, uh, verse number 1, the whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. Look at this. They traveled from place to place as the Lord commanded. And they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to test? But the people were thirsty of water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why do you bring us up of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Now, this text comes after uh, six weeks after the Lord had divided the Red Sea for them and they walked like they were walking on a dry ground. Now, this generation of the children of Israel is one of the generations that experienced so many miracles that have ever been seen in the world up to date. And lo and behold, regardless of the miracles, regardless that the fact that it is the Lord who was commanding them to move in their journey in their wilderness lo and behold they found themselves in a wilderness i'm talking to somebody today the lord spoke to you and you began something out of the promptings of the holy spirit and you didn't expect to go through what you're going through i want to invite you to walk along with me in this journey of the god of the wilderness the God of the wilderness will at times take us to the wilderness and he does that for a purpose, which I know I'll be covering in the future uh, streams. And wilderness is a place that is wild and untamed, is a dangerous place. The wilderness is a place of emotional instability, is a place of mental uncertainty. The wilderness is a symbol of imaginative difficult times. My goodness, the wilderness is not always identical. Your wilderness is not my wilderness. My wilderness can be a sick parent. Your wilderness can be the loss of a loved one. Another person's wilderness can be the loss of a job. Another person's wilderness can be the waiting for a long time in marriage for a child who is not forthcoming. A wilderness for someone else can be the breaking of a relationship. A wilderness for someone else can be a marriage relationship. Wilderness are not identical. They are different. But one of the things that is very key and is an underlying common factor in wildernesses is that they are overwhelming, they are frustrating, and they are overworking. Wilderness, you know, can at times be taking care of unthankful people. It can be a place and a moment of despair. I don't know what is your wilderness. Maybe write down there on the comment section and tell me what is your wilderness. Is it a broken relationship? Is it the loss of a loved one? Is it the loss of a father? Is it the waiting for a child who is not forthcoming? In this, all that we are talking about is that life is full of ups and down and it does not matter who you are god has always led each one of us in different types of wildernesses in our lives god has a way if you have money at times the wilderness can be a terminal illness if you don't have money maybe lack of money and unemployment can be a type of wilderness but what we are saying is that our lives are full of ups and downs. And I want to encourage somebody that we are not living a Hollywood script. Our life is real. 
the seasons of life are transitional moments. The video recordings of our migrations are captured on the memory sticks of our mind. Our personal narrative is not a fable or a fairy tale. It is a real life and life is full of ups and downs. Share with me, where are you? Are you getting into a wilderness? Are you already in one? Or are you getting out of a wilderness? Share with us on the comment section and let's encourage one another. But tonight I want to I just encourage us that in the wilderness, there is the God of the wilderness. And what does God do in these wilderness situations? The Bible is very clear that he will lead and guide. If you are in the wilderness, don't give up. Don't throw the baby and the towel. Don't allow yourself to be broken hearted. The God of the wilderness will lead and he will guide. I love those women that sing and say, he leaded me, oh blessed hope. You know, deep down the valleys of life, deep up the mountain, the valleys of life, the Lord is still my portion in the land of the living. He will lead and he will guide. Are you in a moment whereby you don't know which way to take? You are in a dilemma? Don't give up. Keep on listening. Listen to the silence in the noise. God will speak something and he will usher you to march forward into his own purposes and desire even in that wilderness. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they never left without leadings. The Bible is very clear that they had the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day, which is a typology of the Holy Spirit. The Bible comes again and tells us that they that are led of the Spirit of God are indeed the children of God. So as much as we may find ourselves in wilderness situations, then God is committed to lead and guide. At times we think it was by choice that the children of Israel took the longer uh, route and many have purported so. But scripture will tell us differently. It is not so. God saved them from the hands of the Philistines that were actually camping on the shorter route of going to Canaan. And God also did not want to expose the children of Israel to battle in the hands of the Philistines so that they do not make an easy and an immediate resolve to go back to Egypt, a place whereby was their place of their known, the direct route which was shorter, would have taken them through the Egyptian fortresses. And in case of an attack, they would have been surrounded and they may have also thought it is an easier way to go back to Egypt. Can you imagine? You may be thinking that you have waited for a long time. There is something that God is saving you from. Don't mama, don't complain. Allow the grace of waiting to be upon your life Allow your patience to bear endurance and endurance to give you hope and hope to give you such an anchor that causes you not to be disappointed in the times of stormy moments. Allow God to lead you and to guide you. Exodus chapter number 13 and verse number 17 will attest to that, that God allowed them not to go through the Philistines way because he feared that peradventure, if they were attacked, they would repent and they would choose to go back to Egypt instead of engaging in the battle in the wilderness. God have you in mind. If the route you're taking is longer, keep on moving. God is sparing you for something. At times, we think we have been delayed and we think that we needed to have done some things uh, long ago. I want to encourage somebody, run your race of time. Your race is not my race and my race is not your race. God knew their strength and God knew they would go back to Egypt and he saved them from going back to Egypt. Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 11 and 12 again attest that it was easy for them to go to Egypt because of the comfort they would have received then. Oh my goodness, God has a plan for your life. Now, the other thing that we are discovering that in the wilderness, the God of the wilderness will provide water. 
Look at this place. It's a place that is called Rephidim. Rephidim means it's a place of rest. It's a place where they wanted to spread their bed and rest. And these times and moments are moments of dryness. They are moments of weariness. They are moments of feeling you can give up. They are moments after great victory when you feel you have lost it. But I want to encourage somebody that in the wilderness, God will bring forth the oasis of living waters. In the wilderness, God will still become the rock. He, out of the rock, he will actually provide water. The children of Israel were provided water by God in the wilderness. They murmured. They complained. They asked, did you bring us here to kill us with our children to die in the wilderness? Can you imagine with all the miracles they had experienced? At some point, they lost hope in the God who had done great wonders in their sight. God who had hit the Egyptians with plagues. God who actually commanded Pharaoh to allow them to go. God who had promised that he will be together with he, with them wherever they are going. But a time came, they forgot. And I know these children of Israel are not alone. At times we forget things that God has done in our lives. When we go through challenging moments, when we go through dry spells, when we go through the wilderness experiences, many a times in our natural default as human being is to forget what God has done previously. I am here as a messenger of hope. I'm here to remind you that the God of the bear, the God of the lion is the God of Goliath. Don't go back. Don't give up. Keep on moving. Our God is faithful. Look at how the Bible talks about in Psalms 18 and verse number two, the writer of the book of Psalms says, he is my rock and he is my deliverer. When you get yourself into trouble, remember, he still remains to be the rock. He still remains to be our deliverer. The God of the wilderness will provide water in the wilderness. Do not come up with cisterns that look like they are, can be able to give water because from the well of the tribe of Jacob, yes, there is some water that is actually gushing out. And this water is made to refresh those people that are actually look up to God in the wilderness. When you get yourself in the wilderness, look up to God. Call upon the name of the Lord. When the children of Israel murmured again, against Moses. The Bible says they tempted God, but instead of Moses murmuring about the children of Israel, he called the God of the wilderness. And the God of the wilderness was able to come help and deliver the children of Israel by the rod of Moses. And by that rod, he asked him to strike the water. Out of the rock came out the living waters. Oh, Praise the name of the Lord. What is it that you have in your hands? What is your resource? What is your deposit within your life? When you get yourself into the wilderness experiences and there is no water, there is no life, there is no revival, there is dryness all over. Do not create and make your own cistern that does not provide water. Remember, there is still uh, the well of Jacob and out of it, is springing rivers of living waters. Look at the children of Israel by the rivers of Babylon. There they sat down. Psalms 137 from verse number one. And oh, they welled when they remembered Zion. The Bible is very clear. But within that situation, there was a river that was actually flowing. That's why the Bible says, by the rivers of Babylon. Do you, if you get yourself in the captivity of Babylon, if you get yourself in the challenging situation of a marriage, if you get yourself in the challenging situation of relationship, the loss of a loved one, God will not leave you without an oasis of water. He will make sure that you are refreshed in the wilderness. The Bible is very clear. Elijah, after killing the many gods of Baal in the contest on the mountain, Camel, you know, and he takes off after shaking Ahab and Jezebel and pocketing the keys of rain and nature and walked into the wilderness. And there he is, frustrated, depressed, giving up and asking God to kill him here and now, stressed. Do you know what? God sent an angel 
And I know in my next stream, I will be sharing on the angels in the wilderness, my angels in the wilderness. But God sent an angel and this angel came with bread and water and gave Elijah and asked Elijah to drink and eat because the journey is still long. Are you giving up? Do you want to go back? I want to encourage you. Arise. The God of the wilderness will always provide water. The God of the wilderness will revive you with the freshness that comes from above. And yes, the waters that we are talking about is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the word. The Bible says, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that your forefathers uh, went under the cloud and uh, they actually went through the Red Sea, which was to them a type of baptism. And they drank water from the rocks or the eight manna from heaven and drank water from the rocks and that rock was jesus christ can you imagine in the wilderness the children of israel had the rock and the bible has not left us to grow up in darkness on what this rock was first corinthians chapter number 10 verse number 4 is very clear this rock was jesus christ himself he was with them in the wilderness. I want to encourage somebody. Are you in a wilderness? The God of the wilderness is in that wilderness. Check out, look into the oasis and the rivers of hope in that wilderness. Now, the sum is out of this kind of an understanding. Imagine God has never allowed anybody to go to the wilderness without providing water. Remember this boy called Haggai. After being sent away by Sarah and the husband Abraham, Abraham made sure he has given him some water to carry in the wilderness. And I'm encouraging you, somebody, you are not without help. You are not helpless, hopeless. You have help. Now, the service with this understanding, in Psalm 61 and verse number 1, the Bible says, Hear my cry, O Lord. And attend to my prayer. And when my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. I want you to know that when all is shaken, when all your hopes are shattered, when you have gone through difficult moments and you feel like it is over, I want to encourage you, it is not over. Ask God to attend to the cry of your heart. Ask him to lead you to a rock that is higher than you. And this rock that is higher than us is, our ro is actually our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he is perfect. Jehovah is my rock and he is perfect. He is God. In Psalms, it's telling us very clearly that you can be refreshed. You can be revived. You can be rejuvenated. Just make sure that you linger around the waters, uh, the word of God and you will be revived. God cannot leave you without any help. He is a faithful God. And that's why the Bible says in Psalms 46, there is a river that flows from the throne room of God. And its agenda is one to make the city of God glad. Don't you dry up on your own. Welcome to the river. Welcome to the waters of life. Welcome to the deeper depths of God's word. And it will revive you. It will refresh you. Number three, in the God of this wilderness, he will make sure that in that wilderness, he will work it out. I love the song by v M M Maverick and this girl called Naomi. Naomi does it justice. And she is talking about God will work it out. And I'm here to tell you that God will work it out. The greatest tool that the enemy uses in the wilderness is actually the tool of doubt. He wanted to doubt God. The children of Israel doubted God. They did not believe that he was to provide water for them. No wonder they are murmuring. No wonder they are complaining that God has brought them to kill them. And, you know, Moses has brought them to kill them there. And they would rather have died in Egypt. They doubted God. They tested God. And because of doubting and testing God, many of them never saw the promised land. I want you to know from Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse number 11, He is the God who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. He will work all things after the counsel of His own will. He does not take any counsel from anyone. He is the God who rides on the clouds. 
He is the God who cannot be advised. He is the God who only knows where the wind is blowing from and where the wind is going. And he worketh all things by the counsel of his will. Are you in the wilderness? You are in the good hands. The God of the wilderness will work it out. One thing that I know and one thing that I am convicted is that as you wait upon him, God will work it out. Philippians 2.13 For he is the God who work in us both to do and to will for his own good pleasure. That wilderness is not meant to finish you. Do all things without murmuring and without disputings because God will do his pleasure in the wilderness. In the wilderness, we hope that we may gain homeostasis during that habitation. We are grateful for the good times. We are thankful for the tranquil moments of the rest. We praise God for the periods of peace and prosperity and times of laughter because we know that unless the Lord provides them, all is in vain. I hope you have been blessed. I hope the Lord has ministered unto you. And I want to remind you, regardless of where you are, you could be enjoying your life now. I want you to know that the sun does not shine every day. And when you find yourself in the wilderness, remember God will be waiting for you in the wilderness. In this life, there are droughts, there are deaths, there are diseases, there are destruction. Life is not only experienced in the open fertile field of a happy harvest. We also matriculate through the weeds and the woods of the wilderness. But when you find yourself there, remember, the God of the wilderness will take care of you. Don't give up. Don't die alone. There are people who have been in the wilderness. They can be a great source of encouragement. The God who led you into the wilderness will actually sustain you in that wilderness and he will take you out of that wilderness. Only make sure that when you're in that wilderness, you don't become bitter, but you become better. The choice is yours because God is there, his providence is there, and his desire to work it out on your behalf is there. But are you willing for him to work in you, both to do and to will for his own good pleasure? May the Lord richly bless you. Feel free to reach me out on the numbers that are actually going down on that screen. Reach me out for counsel, for help. Let's work together. Let's share what you're going through. I pray that God will minister to you even in that wilderness. Bow your heads down and let us pray. Our Father and our God, we bless you. We give you thanks because it is you who take us to wilderness stages by stages. But what a joy to know that you are waiting for us in the wilderness. I pray for my viewers. If any one of them is in the wilderness, strengthen them. For them that are out of the wilderness, help them to share their stories, their testimonies, and to encourage somebody. For them that are entering into those wilderness everlasting, Father, I pray that you will encourage them to grow their faith so that they do not fall in the temptations of doubt. We thank you and we bless you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Share this video with somebody. I know we are going through a lot of stuff in this country with all the inflation all over, life becoming expensive and harder and harder day by day. There is hope. There is the God of the wilderness and this God supplies to them that live by faith because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Don't give up. You are not alone. And a dent at the corner is not the end of the road. Don't give up. There is still hope. Look out for those oasis. They are there in the wilderness. May the Lord richly bless you. Amen and amen.